Hey guys, and welcome back to Steamworks. So quality steam depends on quality water going in, and one of the ways that you can do that is with a water softener. So we're gonna step inside one of the units today and check one of those out. All right, so we're here with Nathan. He's our engineer here at Power Mechanical and our resident expert on water softeners. He's gonna uh, tell us a few things about some of the features, sizing, and selection of water softeners for your plants. Yeah, the biggest thing is is selecting and sizing the softener. You don't want a softener that's really, really large. It's, it's not going to really be active all the time, or a softener that's too small. You kind of want the right size softener. It's really important. So what is the right size softener? So then you have to ask yourself, well, how much water am I using every day? Whatever the, the frequency you want to talk about, maybe a week or a month. That's your best starting point. What's your flow rate in your boiler room or your treatment plant? Start there first and that will help you determine maybe what scale of softener you're looking at from a flow rate. The next thing you want to talk about is the level of hardness that's in your water. So you can do a couple things. You can look up uh, water treatment and your local jurisdiction. For us it's Newport News here so I look up Newport News water hardness and start from there. Those two things are really going to get you on the right path for selecting the right softener. So now you had mentioned something about like you don't want to have a softener that's too large because like you know I would think that like if you were oversized with it it couldn't really hurt but like tell us what what could be wrong if you did have one that uh, was I mean basically it was too big of a softener. Yeah so basically the the flow rate we're, we're talking about the flow rate if the softener is too large and the flow rate is too small with relationship to the softener, you can create what's called channeling in the resin. It'll actually create these tunnels down in the resin that actually can allow hard water to pass if those, those tunnels through the resin inside the tanks develop. So you want a good dispersion of your water down through the resin inside of the softener in order for it to really do its job correctly. So being too large of a softener, it can actually create problems for you and could pass hard water on, believe it or not. When it comes to softeners, what essentially, what's the features like? What are you looking for and like what are the different types, I guess? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that I like is the user interface on a, a softener control head. I like things that are easy, things that have, um, you know, programmable buttons but that I can go through pretty easily, maybe change the hardness, uh, you know, maybe change when I want to regenerate the softener. I like that good user interface. Ours are FLEC 2900 control valves in our fleet. And we chose that because it makes for a very good platform for our customers and internally to use and set up. They're very straightforward, uh, several, um, you know, simple steps uh, in your, all the way through the program. Very easy to, to handle and work with. Another thing to consider is when the regeneration occurs, you can have it to uh, regenerate at a time when uh, the softener is depleted, or you could just have it say, I want it to regenerate at 2 a.m. in the morning. I have very little usage of water at that time, so I just want to make sure I always have soft water and I'm going to regenerate it at 2 a.m. That's also an option. So now with that, I see that some, like in this unit, there's we have an, an installed one that's integral to the unit, but then in some of the units, they don't have them or that we put them in there as modules. So what's the reasoning behind that? Like why would some have them and some not? Well, yeah, the, the biggest thing is trying to accommodate the varied demands of our customers. Uh, some customers may need only the boiler and they have a complete mechanical room and their boiler is down and they just want to use our boiler in place of theirs and they're going to send us that soft water and that condensate back. So we may pull our water softener module to use for a different job somewhere. So having that module or portability of our some of our water softener systems allows them to go to different job sites and not be uh, permanently installed in a plant uh, for a boiler that's going to go and serve a location that has a water softener already. So that's one of the big, big issues there are factors that is a benefit to us. Okay. And so then when you get into high pressure steam, you pretty much always will see them in the plants, correct? Okay. So, well, one, one other question that comes to mind sitting here with, you know, with a, someone with a rental boiler, say they don't know a whole lot about these, they get set up on site. What, 
you know, what do they need to kind of like look at? What would be their, you know, uh, without diving in too deep and trying to understand the water softener, what, what kind of things do they need to check regularly and just kind of be mindful of? Right, yeah, so uh, very little effort is required on part of our customers when our softeners and mobile boiler plants arrive at their locations. They're already preset. Uh, for what we feel like is an average hardness value. We may ask the customer to adjust that hardness value. Again, it's really easy to do so in the control head. We'd walk you through that step by step. The next thing is we want to ensure that there's salt on the site already before our boiler arrives or right when our boiler arrives. That way from day one you have good soft water going to the boiler and you can't have that without salt. So you want to make sure there's salt present and in the brine tank so that you're all set up and ready for day one. Well guys, there it is. I hope you liked this video and if you did, be sure and hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe to our channel for more videos and other than that, we'll see you next week for another Steamworks.